you a man, you're a boy. I sometimes wonder. Here yeah, again, I don't really care. I don't know what I am. It's the way I want to stay. we should ask you is uh, to explain the origin of the name of your group, Sham 69. Right. Where I come from is a football team called Walton and Ursham. And uh, when I was a nipper, I went in the toilet, right? <laughs> and on the toilet was written, Walton and Hersham 69. But the Walton and Her have been rubbed out. They just left Sham 69. And I thought, what a great name for a band. So I called the band Sham 69. Was 1969 a good year for Walton and Hersham's football yeah, team? Yeah, they won a lot of things that year. But I think the other good thing about it was it's a graffiti name, you know? Most bands get their names from graffiti, like, you know? Right. So how long has Sham 69 been together? They've been together for two years. But as the line-up is now, they've only been together for... seven or eight months. Why did you have to change people? The first people in the band were really not into the music. And I was struggling all the time because I, I kept wanting to do things that I believed in and they didn't really believe in it, you know, and so they wasn't really into it. So it was just a waste of time. We never got on, you know. Did you find any difficulty getting new people? No, I didn't actually. But all the members of the band had never been in the band before except for the guitarist, like, you know, which is he's very, very good. Yes, it's very noticeable. He's, he yeah, plays some very he's good lines. He's, he's great. Your first um, record was on Step Forward, the small independent right, label. Yeah. Huh? But that was produced by John Cale, I note. Now, th how did that work? Well, John Cale was at the Acklam Hall when we played the first... We played with the Cool Tuners in Chelsea that night, like, you know, and we was bottom of the bill. And uh, John Cale was there and he thought he was really good that night. And he asked if he could produce us, like, you know, for nothing. So I said, yeah, why not? And did it work? I don't think so, but, you know, that's a matter of opinion. Yeah, the track that was uh, supposed to be the hit was called I Don't Wanna, right? Yeah. See, that was another thing. I wanted Ulster, the J-side, and they wanted I Don't Wanna. And the thing was about it, it made me sound very weak because the way it tried to make me sound like more Velvet Underground-ish than Sham 69. And I don't believe a producer anyway can see a band once and then produce them. I believe if you're going to produce a band, you've got to know exactly everything about the band. You've got to know everything about the musical aspect of the band because otherwise, I mean, you know, you're not going to get the best out of them. Thank you. 
course, you have got a remarkable following because a lot of people in the press have said that you're the last of the genuine punk fans standing for the same things that the, the movement began to stand for. Do you see it that way as well? Well, the way I see it now is you see that punk is dead in the respect that it's commercially dead, which is brilliant, right? Because the commercial aspect of it was always going to destroy it, you know, anyway. And, you know, people said, right, destroy this and destroy that in the beginning. And all they did was destroy themselves. But I know for a fact, I mean, I went the other night to a youth club and I saw this little band playing, right? So there's, there's plenty of little bands that have cropped up because of punk playing youth clubs, which is great, because it means that there's thousands and thousands of these little bands playing in these youth clubs every night of the week. And it's given them a chance to do it. And if it weren't for punk, they wouldn't have been able to do it. So that's the, that's, that's the good thing about it. It does seem that all the papers are saying, you know, letters in the letters pages, the pistols have, have blown it now, Sham 69 are the only ones that are really really still doing it. Are you aware that you, you've attracted fans from those areas? Oh, I know that, yeah. I mean, I know that, I mean, we used to play the Roxy at three people and get cans chucked at us, you know, and uh, we didn't give a monkeys about it, and we don't give a monkeys now, whereas there's 300,000 uh, coming, you know, because... I mean, it's obvious they're going to come in the end. If you, the bigger you get, the obviously more people are going to come. And, I mean, if they don't like you, they're not going to like you anyway. But if they do like you, they're going to like you. It's as simple as that. And, and that's good because that's all I live for. I live for the audience, you know, and that's all I live for. Because what I believe in is getting across to more and more people all the time, which is great. I'll always stick in it as long as I can. As long as I can stay Jimmy Percy. Because once I can't stay Jimmy Percy any longer, then I'll get out. I mean, I will definitely get out, you know, because I wouldn't be able to stand and not be able to be myself. You've got several songs on your album which seem to sort of indicate um, ways of life that you can suggest to people who are sort of struggling. Things like, it's never too late. Yeah, it's never too late really is about me, I think, you know. I was very unhappy one day and I went and wrote, it's never too late. Because I, I felt, and I know that lots and lots and lots of other people feel the same way as me, right? They don't really know what they really want in life because there's so many things around them and their mates are saying, oh, do this, do that and their other mates are saying, do this, do that and then they see life the way they see it and then they see the advertisements and the telly and God knows what else and it's all this thing that's going around in your head all the time and it's never too late, it is saying it's never too late to find out who you are because the older you get, the more you understand what you really are seem to be advice again I mean things like family life family life is a song what it's trying to say is it's trying to show the humor of it as well as the aggression of it see all our songs are humorous but aggressive right they're trying to say that there's all this aggression in this 
but also all the time there's still all this humour in us and that's what all our music's about. Um, Family Lives is, is, is saying that when our mums and dads shout and bawl at us all the time, and they do it, I mean every mum and dad shouts at every kid, right? But what happens is if you do get chucked out or you say, I mean thousands of times I've said, right I'm off and I'm, I'm, I'm leaving, and where have I ended up? I've, I've ended up sitting on some park bench, freezing to death. Instead, what I could be doing is taking all that, what my mum and dad have been saying to me, and having a nice bed to sleep in and getting a cup of tea in the morning instead. You know, instead of lying on some park bench, you know, freezing to death. <laughs> and it's saying it's better, you know, it's better to take it than, and then end up in that position. Right, I think you're absolutely right. And more people should take notice of that sort of thing. You bloody will get upstairs and get washed. No, I ain't. Oh, won't you throw yeah, your dinner? I'm going out in a minute. Bloody burnt now. Yeah, I'm going out in a minute anyway. So You're not going out. Sorry. You're not. You're oh, staying in oh, until oh. your father comes home. Oh, no, I am. Oh, yes, you are. Well, I, I, Don't I, argue. I'll get a bloody clap round here, mate. Clap me round here. I will. No, you won't. Too bloody big for your boots. Yeah, you're all starting on me, of course live the studio tracks sound a lot better you know you can hear it all why did you decide to do a, a half live for the first time well the live songs are live songs right the live songs are songs that when we do them live the audience participate so that's why i did it that way right and the studio songs are songs that would be better done in the studio because they would be now to understand the songs much better and doing them live and losing lots of things that people wouldn't have been out of here if you know I mean if they'd have been on the studio side right they're sort of like football type songs I'm trying to make all our songs you see songs for the audience to participate in because that's really what punk was all about in the beginning participation of the audience and that's what it always should be about that's why me and Dave always write them songs like that to make sure that you know mm. his guitar isn't so nice on the on the live side either right? no because when we get up on stage we're trying to generate high energy into the people in the audience and the reason why it doesn't sound extra extra tight is because we're not interested in our our musical ability on stage we're interested in pleasing the audience to the best of our ability i think you're proving that you can play on the studio side and that you also enjoy the live thing exactly, on the other side yeah, yeah. Boston breakouts the single I believe there's a bit of a story about that. It's, it's about a, a mate of yours, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's about a bloke called Mick. See, what happened to my mate Mick was he, he got put away because this girl couldn't start this car because he, he'd done this job and he climbed over the wall and the car couldn't start and the, and the police got him, you know, because the, the alarm went off and everything else. And that's what it's about. It's about this bloke Mick because he made a breakout. He got out, but he got caught, like, you know. There's mm. a bit of a story about it. It'd better take too long to tell, you know. <laughs> Why did you choose that one as the single? Because I think it's one of the best live songs we do. And it's also another one that people can sing along to. Hey, 
going to do from here is the music going to change to a, a more accessible to more people type of music or are you going to continue with punk yeah but what is punk well the studio side doesn't sound like punk necessarily but the live side does which way are you going to go or are you going to keep them both going together but keep them both going together because the simple thing about it is that we're trying to bring everybody together and the only way to bring everybody together is play music that everybody can like Right. I mean, to to be in a punk rock group, you don't have to get up and go. Da -da 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 -da, I want you. You don't have to do that. It's, that's not what it's all about. And and then apart from that, you can't hear the words anyway. No. And the words are the most important thing. Right. And I think the impression has been given to a lot of people, particularly outside London and uh, on, on outside the big cities, that that is what punk is. <laughs> you, you can't. Exactly. Yeah. And it's about time that that stopped. Like you know because everybody thinks that you've got to play like the Clash or the Sex Pistols to make it in punk. And you haven't. You, what you've got to do is just be yourself and get up on stage uh, and do it. That's what it's about, just getting up and doing it, forming a band and doing it. That's what it was about in the beginning. Oh, what a talker. Jimmy Percy of Sham 69 and tracks from their upcoming album Tell Us The Truth. 